I'm super excited about this, um, big Marvel fan. Today I'm going to be talking about Auxiliary Routes, Ant-Man of Angular. And I know all of you all just thought the same thing right about now, which is if Auxiliary Routes are Ant-Man of Angular, who's Iron Man, who's Spider-Man, and who's Captain America? And I know I only have five minutes, so of course I'm going to talk all of that real quick and then get back to Routes. So recently on JavaScript Day, Minko mentioned that Angular can be broken down into three main subproducts: uh, frameworks, tooling, and components. Now, framework is where all of our um, all of our primitives live that we use, like services, forms, routes, components, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's our MCU. Um, so components are obviously Captain America. Uh, Iron Man is your dependency injection, Spider-Man are your pipes, Hulk are your forms, because, you know, simple and reactive. And then you have <laughs> Doctor Strange, which are your services, and you have Nick Fury is your directives, and does anyone want to guess what Guardians of Galaxy would be? Exactly! 10 points to Gryffindor. Okay, so if you like having such fun, meaningful, deep conversations, I'm Ankita. You can find me at the speaker meet and greet later happening today. Or you can find me adulting and being an adulting junkie around the lakes and trails of Austin, Texas, where I currently live. And you um, can always connect with me over the interwebs. Okay, so back to routes. Um, Angular's config based routing solution works Marvel Leslie for most of your SPA needs, and uh, I'm sure everyone here knows how to configure that. Uh, usually in your app component, you have a special space for your router outlet where whatever component you have associated with route just shows up there. But imagine the spot scenario you have. Imagine an app which shows information about the characters, comics, and creators associated with whatever's the latest Marvel movie that was released. And in case you missed it, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was the latest Marvel movie released on June 2nd in a theater near you. So this app is going to have all the comics characters and creators associated with Spider-Man. Um, notice two key features, though. You have to create a shareable link of the details panel, which should also remain open no matter which route you navigate to. And you have to create a favorite section which the user can view no matter which main route you're, you're on. So you see these two, and you know it's time for Ant-Man to suit up. Um, let's look at that quick. If I can play it. Oops. Is it playing? Oh, it's playing, sorry. <laughs> so you have your favorite section uh, where you can view all your favorites all the time, and you have all your characters and comics showing up. Wait, where should I look? Um, and then there's the details panel that shows up when you click on the name of any of those cards. So let's focus on the favorites section first. You have it, the, you can add favorites while you're, any of your favorites while you're any of the main route, and um, you can basically interact with your primary route and your auxiliary route at the same time, or whatever component is loading, you can rearrange it, uh, and you have a very consistent pattern as you're n n interacting with the two components, whether it's in the primary route component or in the auxiliary route area. And you can just, it's a consistent user experience because it's always there. Uh, so the implementation looks like this. The outlet name in the template should be the same as the value provided to the outlet. Um, because auxiliary routes operate parallel to the main route configuration, they appear adjacent in the parentheses, like so. It's, I don't know, it's probably not clear, but. So they appear in the parentheses, and I like to think of it as the giant man version of Ant-Man, because you can see with route parameters and chatter routes and query parameters, it can get 
really big, distracting, and inflated. Uh, but there's an easy way to get rid of it. Oops, sorry. There's an easy way to get rid of it. If you use skip location change, um, it gets rid of all of the di distraction in the URL, and it just still works as it should. And basically, I'd like to think of this, like if you add this, since Ant-Man to Quantum Rim and it's still working. Um, okay, and sometimes you do need the giant man though. So suppose you were looking at Peter Parker's details and you wanna share the link, but you are actually on Comic Stroud and that's how you wanna share it. So you click on the share link and the other person will see exactly what you were seeing. Uh, the way to close an auxiliary route or get out of, like get rid of the component and just have the primary route loaded is you either in the template you pass null or in your component you pass null to it. So that was a really simple, straightforward use case for auxiliary routes. Um, some more use cases could be that you have a comparison mode load up as your user is navigating between different products and they want to keep adding. Or you can have your help or chat or any other feature consistently being showing in an auxiliary route as your user is navigating between different routes. Uh, it's just an effective way to have, you know, a consistent user experience to have a details panel experience show up in your app. Um, that's all I have for you today. That's my time. I hope this talk helped you. Thank you. Job. I actually, I just wanted to say, can I have the mic? Yes. I just wanted to say one last thing. Uh, I wanted to leave you with one last thing about auxiliary routes, which is true for everything in life, that just because you can doesn't mean you should. So thank you. Thank you so much. Good job.